coming to this answer key, I'm going to run through this relatively efficiently. And I'm thinking that you might have some of these answers already in your particular papers, all right? So how does this guy work? When you apply a hair dryer to this tube, all of this liquid here starts to heat up. And as you know, when things heat up, the volume expands and the density goes down. So as the density goes down, you can think about the dots spreading out. These little glass balls start falling down because there's less things keeping it up, right? So as they start to fall down, you can see the ones that are left at the top are the ones with the um, highest temperature and the ones that go down here have the lowest temperature. But the one that is right in the middle here at 72 degrees is the correct temperature. Why is that the correct temperature? It's because this one in the middle most closely matches the density of the fluid around it. And that's because if it were any higher, it'd be less dense than the fluid. If it were any lower, it would be more dense than the fluid. But if it's right in the middle, it's matching the density of the fluid. So they set up these tags so that that temperature, in this case 72, is about the temperature of the fluid at that moment. And that's what the density is at that moment in the middle here. All right, so that's how a Galileo thermometer works. A peep chamber of doom. So what you should have seen is that the mass and the weight of the peep are quite different. One is measured in grams and one is measured in newtons. And the reason they're different is because they're measuring different things. Mass measures the amount of matter in the peep in grams. Weight measures the pull of gravity on the peep in newtons. So would the mass change if it were in space? No, not at all. It's the same amount of matter in it, same amount of stuff. So it's not going to change no matter what the gravity is. But the weight does change because in space there's no gravity. So there's nothing pulling down on the peep. And if you had that little spring scale in space, nothing would pull it down. It would be a zero gravity environment, zero pull down on the peep, zero weight. And the reason, of course, it um, expands in the microwave is because when things heat up, they expand. So marshmallows are full of air. When you heat up that air, it expands just like the balloon we did in class. All right. Okay, plasma grapes, how do these work? So you might remember that um, plasma is like an extremely heated form of gas because it goes solid, liquid, gas, plasma. So plasma is what happens when you take, uh, what it goes here is because um, the grape is structured in such a way that it takes these microwaves and it just focuses them just because of the shape of the grape and the material of the grape, it focuses them so that um, Whatever water vapor there is here from the grape as it heats up, because you know grapes are mostly water, so as that heats up, you have water in a gas form, and then the microwaves are concentrated, so it takes that gaseous water and it zaps it into a plasma. So that's how those work, right? Um, lastly, densities of different gases. Um, what you would have seen is that helium and hydrogen are both um, gases that are not very dense at all. Right, they're actually the least two least dense gases uh, to in the periodic table. So um, it, they're both they're both uh, less dense than air, which is why a balloon full of helium will float on top of air. They are both less dense, certainly, than sulfur hexafluoride, which is used in the video, and tungsten hexafluoride, which is the densest gas. So helium is a non-renewable element found deep in the Earth's crust, and we extract it and we do all kinds of stupid stuff like that, like put it in kids' balloons. Um, we also use it for other things like electronics manufacturing. So here's the problem. Every time you take a balloon and you let it go, or you pop it, or you deflate it, and the helium releases, guess where that helium goes? Straight up, because it's less dense than the air around it. So surrounding the Earth in the atmosphere, there is kind of a layer of helium that um, we have released, and we can't get it back because it's up there. So uh, that's why over time, helium is becoming more and more scarce and it's becoming more and more expensive to buy balloons for your party. So when you have great grandchildren, no one can, there'll be no balloons at their party. Let's take a moment and think about that. RIP balloons. All right, thanks everyone. Go on to the next task. If you have questions about this, feel free to email me or find me in person. Bye-bye.